What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. So this video is my submission to the Summer 2019 Math Video Competition. If you have no idea what that is, it's okay. It's hosted by the legend himself, Black Pen Red Pen. And if you have no idea who that is, that's not okay, right? I'll put his link right down here. But yeah, if you don't know him, check him out. He did a video uh, within the last six months or so, I believe, where he did 100 integrals in one take. From start to finish, it took like over five hours. And yeah, these are not like easy integrals, like the integral of 3x squared kind of stuff. These are like integration by parts, trig substitution, partial fractions, all kind of stuff. And yeah, he did that video from start to finish and it blew up as it deserved to, as was expected, right? The video blew up. So as a result, he started this math competition and the guidelines are to pick one problem from, so I don't have to do 100 problems. I'm not gonna do 100, 100 integrals. I just have to pick one and do it and the video has to be under eight minutes and then I email it to him and then I don't really know what the uh, criteria is for grading this video, but hopefully mine is considered because the prize is a really sick shirt that says calculus finisher and it's like a stick figure like ninja fighting each other. It's, it's really cool. I get my name on it and everything. So hopefully I get the shirt. I really want this shirt. So vote for me. I don't, I don't even know if it's a voting process or if he just picks, but if there is voting, vote for me, like this video, do all that stuff. So yeah, I remember. And I'll be 100% honest, I'm not up to date. I haven't been doing a ton of integrals nonstop, all right? This past semester, I was a TA for pre-cal. Um, so yeah, I haven't done a ton of integrals, but I do remember when I was, was doing a lot of integrals, and I remember the integrals I liked the most were the ones with trig in them, where you had to sort of use identities, manipulate the trig expression to get it to the point where you could do some kind of substitution or could integrate it. So that's what made me decide to pick this number 19 cotangent to the fifth x dx, and I'm gonna go ahead and integrate this and explain what I'm doing step by step. So, all right, so just by looking at this, I honestly have no idea what the integral is gonna look like, but I do know what's usually a good first step when you have a cotangent or tangent and you can't figure out how to integrate it right away, and that's to rewrite it in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So cotangent is just cosine over sine. So cotangent to the fifth x will be cosine to the fifth x over sine to the fifth x, right? And then I still have this dx here. And now what I remember from calculus two is that when I have odd powers, all right, so I have an odd power of cosine here, I can separate this as cosine x times cosine to the fourth x. And the reason I wanna do that is because I could rewrite cosine to the fourth x using a Pythagorean identity. And I can rewrite it as one minus sine squared x squared. And the reason I wanna do that is because then I can do a u substitution. And if you don't see it yet, I'll go ahead and write it out and then maybe you'll see it. So if I separate this, I have cosine x times cosine to the fourth x over sine to the fifth x dx. And now I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite the cosine to the fourth x using the Pythagorean identity. So I have cosine x times one minus sine squared x, the whole thing is squared, over sine to the fifth x. And maybe now you see why I did this, right? Because look what happens. Look what happens if I pick u, if I let u equal sine x. My du is cosine x dx. Look how nicely that I can substitute cosine x dx with du, right? Works out really nice if I do this. So u, let u equal sine x, and then du equals cosine x dx, and now I can do my u substitution. So I can rewrite this, I'll draw an arrow here, u substitution. So the cosine x dx is gone, I'm left with one minus u squared, and the whole thing is squared. One minus u squared, and on the bottom I have u to the fifth, all right? Now, let's see, this, can't forget the du. I'm gonna go ahead and foil out the top, right? I'm gonna foil out the top, I get one minus two u squared plus u to the fourth, quick maths, all right? And what is this? Over u to the fifth du. Okay, now I can start the integration. What you might wanna do is separate all three terms since we have one thing in the denominator, we can split this up into three terms. I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write my exponents as negative exponents. Uh, students tend to have an easier time integrating when it's u to the negative fifth instead of one over u to the fifth, something like that, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and split all that up. So what do I really have here? One over u to the fifth, so u to the negative fifth, 
what else? Minus two u squared over u to the fifth. So that's minus two over u to the third. So minus two u to the negative third. What else do I have? Plus u to the fourth over u to the fifth. So plus u to the negative first. Actually, I'll write plus uh, one over u because I know that's gonna be ln once I integrate it, right? One over u. Okay, now I can go ahead and start my integration. So I'm gonna draw an arrow here. Add one to the exponent, u to the negative fourth, and then divide by that new exponent. I divide by negative four. So I have a negative out here. I'm gonna put the four in the bottom. All right, let's continue. Add one to the exponent, that's u, let's see, u to the negative second, and now I divide by the negative two. That actually cancels really nicely. So this is just plus u to the negative second, all right? And maybe I should write this as one over u squared because I'm about to go back and do my substitution. If you prefer that, that's fine. I know this is gonna be ln u, and do not forget plus c, okay? But the reason I just kept it like this is because I wanna make note that sine x equals one over cosecant x, right? So I can simply just replace these u's with cosecants, and I can leave these in the numerator, right? This u will still be a sine x, so hopefully you recognize that, and if you don't, maybe you have to go and break this up into multiple steps, right? But let's go ahead and rewrite this out. So what is my final, uh, final answer for this integral is negative cosecant to the fourth x over four plus cosecant squared x plus ln of sine x, and what can you not forget? The plus c, don't forget the plus c. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you support me in winning this contest and receiving this awesome shirt, please hit the like button, leave a comment below. And yeah, I really hope I win this shirt is really what this is about. Check out Black Pen, Red Pen's channel, check out my channel, and don't forget the plus C, but most importantly, don't forget to flex those brain muscles. I'll see you on the next video.